A blessed morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to Carmelite Monastery. We are now on the third Sunday of Lent. Let me read to you this circular letter, number 2023-05, from the Roman Catholic Bishop of Bacolod, Diocese of Bacolod. Greetings. As per circular letter number 2023-004, dated February 10, 2023, the Diocese has transferred the scheduled special collection for the 31st World Day of the Sikh to the month of March to give priority to the appeal for help for the earthquake victims of Turkey and Syria. As such, this March 12, 2023, we shall finally have the collection for the sick. Please forward the amount to the office of the diocesan treasurer. Second, the Lenten season is an opportune time for us to engage in much soul searching and more heightened engagements with societal concerns as required by our evangelizing mission as Christians, being light and salt of the world. For this year's 40-day observance, the bishops of Negros from the dioceses of Bacolod, San Carlos, and Cabancalan have released the following collegial issuances for the consideration of all our faithful. First, the collegial Lenten message of Negros Occidental bishops, and second, the Collegial Pastoral Statement of Negros Occidental Bishops on the Climate Crisis and the Urgent Need for Just Energy Transition to Renewal Energy. Let us be mindful of Jesus' call for us to be co-workers in the building of God's Kingdom of peace, mutual concern, and love. Have a blessed and spirit-filled Lenten season. With my prayers and pastoral blessing, Patricia A. Buson, SDP DD, Bishop of Bacolod, by order of His Excellency, Reverend Father Roy Christian Misolgon, Chancellor Secretary. Dear brothers and sisters, we know from life how precious water is. When we are thirsty, there is nothing like a drink of fresh water. In today's Gospel, Jesus uses the image of bubbling water to illustrate the eternal life that He is offering us. Jesus alone can satisfy our thirst for meaning, for the divine. May our Eucharistic celebration be a prelude to our participation in the banquet of eternal life. Let us now rise and welcome our Lord Jesus Christ in the person of his minister, Reverend Father Roy Christian Kisilgon.
We begin our celebration in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. We say, I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. and all goodness, when fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have given us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord's gift of water reminds us of the life-giving water that Jesus speaks of in, in the Gospel. The first reading. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go, the staff with which you struck the river. I will, standing, I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meriva. Because of the Israelites quarreled them, and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Through Jesus, God pours into our hearts what we thirst for, faith, hope, and the Spirit, the giver of life. The second reading. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Sisters and brothers, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we gain access by faith to this grace in which we stand and we boast in hope in the glory of God. And hope that does, does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person. Though perhaps for a good person, why one might find courage to die. But God proves His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all rise. You are truly the Savior of the world. Give me living water that I may never thirst again. Be with you. 
and with your spirit. Proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from the journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and a cistern is deep. When then can you get this living water? Or where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself? with his children and his flocks. Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worship on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand, because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed the Father seeks such people to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When He comes, He will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am He, the one who is speaking with you. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there th two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word, and they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. Friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. We're on the third uh, Sunday of Lent, and the story is about this encounter of Jesus with a Samaritan woman uh, in the well of Jacob. And we've heard this uh, familiar story so many times. And it is important that in this Lenten season, we pay close attention to the details. As one spiritual writer say, God is in the details. And so let us, for this Sunday, allow ourselves to notice the details. My dear friends, today the Jesuits are celebrating the 401st anniversary of the canonization of St. Ignatius of Loyola. And in his spiritual exercises, for those who are giving the spiritual exercises and accompanying people in the spiritual exercises, uh, the, the Jesuits have a way of looking into the actions of the Spirit and the one who is directed in the 30-day exercise. And a beautiful uh, imagery that is given by Ignatius in relation to discernment is this the imagery of the sponge and the imagery of the rock. According to Ignatius, based on his experience of God, when our disposition jives with the action of the Spirit, the experience of prayer is like a sponge. Yan nag-absorb lang. Nagadalhay ang Espiritu, kagamit sa isang gino. 
sa ato mga tagipuson. And according to him, if it's the opposite, if our disposition does not jive with the action of the Spirit, the Spirit can still work wonders, but with more effort. And the experience is like water hitting a rock. Nagatulo man ang tubig, pero sa dalayon matibag yamang git ang katiga sang batu, hindi ba lang? Wala man yung posible sa ispirito, hindi ba lang? Pero sa dalayon, ang bato matipagin because of the action of water. I'm uh, sharing you this because it is important that we realize that conversion would always be primarily an action of grace. No? Our basic catechesis uh, gives us that the theological virtues come to us as simply gifts. We don't produce them, they are gratuitous in character. A lot of people would come and ask for spiritual direction at times and they would say, Father, I have a question, I have a question, I have a question, but I don't have a question in your eyes. Or perhaps an old woman, an old lady would come and say, Father, I'm concerned about my parents. Kaya do, wala mo kami nagkulang. We are a very religious family. Pero nga akong mga apo do, wala na nagasilim ba? Father, sa pamilya namin, hindi na kami katoliko. Ang iba kong mga kauturan nag-protestantin uh, na. Pero pa, paano na, Father? Wala mo kami nagkulang to explain the faith. Uh, and my only advice is this. We have to realize that faith is a gift. And hearts are converted by no less than God Himself. So conversion is God's gift. Take, for example, the experience of Augustine and Monica. It took some time for Augustine to realize the kind of life that he was living. Monica would spend days and nights in tears praying for Augustine. And all she can simply do is to pray and beg God that one day Augustine will be converted. It is because only God can change hearts. The same is true with this discernment by Ignatius. Even though our hearts are so hardened, but only God's grace can create even little changes with the droplets of water that is given by the Spirit to finally open and crack our hearts, our hardened hearts. God does not force Himself into our lives. And that is what we see in today's story. Jesus engages the woman in a dialogue and from what he is saying, Jesus enters slowly into her life. Malagaligay po tante, no? Nagaistorya ko lang sa gino. Because in the end, maskin, jutay lang. Amat-amat lang may pagkambyukit. And Jesus starts where the woman was. She was at Jacob's well. So the point of entry was precisely that. And the woman was explaining, well, this well we got from Jacob. Di mas taas ka ba kay Jacob? Ini nga tubig di rin, nagpainom sa kamon mga katigulangan. Asta subong, regalo ni Haling kay Jacob. And that sense of water that is beneficial to people, that was the point of entry of Jesus. Tika namin sa mga spiritual writers, masiling, God meets us where we are. Kung gusto mo istoryahan ang bubon, hindi na kita masugod istoryahan ay ni Jesus sa bubon. Kung gusto mo istoryahan ay utang, nagda ka mo may istoryahan ay ni Jesus, masugod kita istorya utang. Kung gusto mo istorya fake news, nagda ka kita may istoryahan ay ni Jesus, fake news, God meets us where we are. And from the course of the discussion of this well, Jesus explains the concept of living water. Water is life. And when we have water, we survive. 
But it's not simply about physical water, but I'm offering you water that will overflow. The living water. What was the quality of life of the Samaritan woman? She is living in a life that is not to the full because she is a prisoner of her story, a prisoner of her past. Hindi lang na uhaw siya, na uhaw siya sa iyang mga himata, na uhaw siya sa iyang mga amiga, na uhaw siya sa iyang komunidad, precisely because she's experiencing being an outcast. She is not reconciled to herself because she's living in duplicity. She is not reconciled to the community because people know that she's a public sinner. She is not reconciled to God because in her conscience she is living in sin. As a matter of fact, in the course of this this discussion later on it surfaced that she is living with someone who is not her husband. Beautiful. Ganami. Kaya kung may isa ka tao makasiling sa imo sa kamatuuran sa imo kaugalingon, then you realize. This is not simply a person. The one that I'm talking to is a prophet. The one that I'm talking to is a God who knows me. Di ba la? Pas kina no pang sekreto na aton. Pero kung may kabalos ng aton sekreto, isa lang. Sino ang Dios? And so the woman was led in this discussion to realize I'm not simply talking to a teacher of the law. I'm not simply talking to a prophet, but I'm talking to someone who is even greater than a prophet. Beautiful. God starts where we are, and we continue simply the dialogue, because later on, slowly, we will discover more of this God and the truth of ourselves. This is what the Lenten observance is all about. Hinay-hinay lang. We are already in the third week of Lent. And hopefully our conversation with the Lord has deepened to a level of truthfulness and honesty. Because in that experience of truth and honesty, the more we learn about ourselves and this God who wants us to live life to the full. Kaya matamat lang. Di ba la? Sakto man. Di ba? Huwag man lang si Lingo Gino. A very condemning, condescending approach. No. The Lord helps us to realize things slowly but surely. And now after the woman realized what the Lord has done to her, and there was a change of heart in her, it can't help that the experience be seen by people among her kindred and relatives. Hindi ba la? Nagsugod sa sulod, subong nagwa na, balano na nga may nagkambyo. Right? And so people were interested. What caused the change in you? What caused the conversion process? We can see that that water which you ingested, <laughs> ingested, which you took, which uh, satisfied your thirst, is now overflowing. So they noticed and they began to ask a question Where have you been? I have been to the well. <laughs> Sino nakita mo to? Si Jesus. Ipakilala siya sa amon. Beautiful. No? But look at the turn of events. Later on, the people were saying, and uh, John uh, took note of that, many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. Beautiful, no? Kita bila ko magbakalta sa isang produkto, di bila? 
namit ni siya. Oh. Ah, namit. Oh. Tising lang ta. Pag tising ta, masing ta, tuod namit manggit. Na. So this is what happened. That encounter of the woman in the well led to her uh, talking about that encounter. It was an overflow of the conversion experience. But those who heard her also had a personal experience with this Jesus that the woman was talking about. Di ka nami. Di ba lang? Masin ka, ka nami simba sa Carmel. Di ba lang? Di pero kung hindi niyo matistingan mag simba sa Carmel, di ba? Kung matistingan mo natin, balik-balik ka na sa Carmel. Di ba lang? Na, di ka nami. You are to taste it for yourselves. That's why the psalmist in the Old Testament would say, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. It is not something abstract. Our God is experiential. He made himself tangible. We can hear him. We can see him. We can taste him. We can interact with him. And hopefully that is what is happening to us during this Lenten season. Start your conversation with the Lord. It is not yet too late. We are at the third Sunday of Lent. There's still much time. And hopefully from that starting point of your conversation of God, Jesus will lead you to a deeper, an even deeper understanding of who this Jesus is and who ourselves are. May the Lord grant you the grace of conversion that he also granted this Samaritan woman. Amen. Let us now rise and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to death, thirty rose again. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, church, the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brethren, the Lord is truly our Savior. Let us then ask the Father to give us the living water that we may never thirst again. As we say, Father, through the living water, quench our thirst. Father, through the living water, quench our thirst. Help our church leaders become channels of your living water in their ministry and service to the flock under their care. We pray. Father, Father through, through the living, living water, water, quench our, our thirst. thirst. Quench the inner longings of our national and local leaders, that they may become more merciful and compassionate in both their public and private life. We pray. Father, Father through, through the living, living water, quench our, our thirst. May all families draw life and love from the living water, so that every parent, son and daughter, sibling and kin, may become means of your forgiveness and reconciliation. We pray. Father, Father through the living, the living water, water, quench our, our thirst. thirst. Let our departed loved ones draw eternal life from the living water. We pray. Father, Father through the living, the living water, water, quench our, our thirst. thirst. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray, Father, Father through, through the living water, water, quench our thirst. We also pray for people who are experiencing the hardening of their hearts, perhaps because of disappointments, because of the harshness of life, because of an unforgiving community. We ask that the Lord grant them conversion. We pray. Father, through the living water, quench our thirst. Quench our inner thirst, dear Father, that we may also become channels of your grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and our living water. Amen. Amen.
please all rise. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we, too, give you thanks, and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and a chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Patricio, our Bishop, we send their Bishop Emeritus and all the clergy. 
Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of Mount Carmel, with St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, St. Sebastian, St. Lorenzo Ruiz, St. Pedro Alonsod, St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Teresa of Avila, St. Teresa of the Child Jesus, St. John of the Cross, all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching will now call upon God, our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Peace.
Friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who are joining our live stream celebration, let us now pray this spiritual communion prayer. O oh my Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament. I love you and I desire you to come into my heart. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, Come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, O oh, never leave me. May the burning and most sweet power of your love consume me, that I may die for you, who died for love of me. Amen.
please all rise. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer of the Synod. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us. Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life, and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Kindly be seated for a while. You are all lovingly invited to the Triduum of Masses and Feast of St. Joseph. The Triduum of Masses will begin on Friday, March 17. Our Mass will be at 6.30 in the morning. Since the feast day falls on a Sunday, March 19, the Solemnity of St. Joseph is moved to Monday, March 20, 2023 and our Mass will be at 6.30 in the morning. Thank you, and may God bless us all. Please all rise. So we continue in our Lenten uh, journey, and uh, let us pay close attention to the promptings of the Spirit. The more we become honest with ourselves, our situation, our realities, I think that is where the Spirit is. Truth is always accompanied uh, by the Spirit because we are to worship God in spirit and in truth. I will now give the blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May mighty God bless you and your loved ones, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist has been offered. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.